Hello, uh, welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates that we will be filming today. Uh, I'm Andras. My name is Theodor. And as usual, we have uh, accumulated the questions regarding a specific topic on our email. Today we're, go we're going to be talking about the differences between Aimpoint H2 and Aimpoint Model 9000. Now, uh, these are all uh, entry-level red dot sites made by Aimpoint, even though they're from the entry level, they're still, still high class as befits uh, mm. a company such as Aimpoint. And uh, with these, uh, because they're somewhere from the same price class, um, the, our customers often, often ask us which one should I choose and today we're going to help them by enumerating the characteristics and the first thing that I would like to know is uh, what are the main the most obvious differences between the H2 and the 9000? Well first of all I go a little bit one step back uh, the H2 is the latest model the micro H2 is the latest model from uh, from Aimpoint in this form factor in this small uh, small red dots but enhanced red dots not reflex the 9000 is the previous model so this is this is the model which is on the market for quite uh, some time and even if you're looking at the pricing uh, it is a difference it's about 200 euros of difference and also in technologies incorporated there is a little bit of difference because the micro h2 is newer um, normally the basic question we get is should I go with the 9000 which is really affordable or should I spend a little bit more for the H2? What do I gain? Um, it, I would say that the dilemma is not so clear-cut because the form factor of these two red dots is completely different. The 9000 series which incorporates two different versions, the longer version and the shorter version, they're optically completely the same but the longer version can be mounted on longer actions. They are, we say, full-size tube red dots. That means they, are, they look almost like a small rifle scope. And they are mounted with 30 millimeter rings, which it's really easy for mounting because I would say majority of rifles in the world have a possibility to mount 30 millimeter rifle scopes on them. So mounting a 30 millimeter red dot from aim point, which has a, a mounting uh, dimension almost equal to, to rifle scopes, it's really easy. You can pick up any mounts and just mount it on a rifle. With Micro H2, the mounting is a little bit different because the, the dot is so small. It has a uh, interface which is common to all micro models. You can you can see this interface here. So it has a interface with four screws, and uh, only mounts which are made specifically for Aimpoint Micro can accommodate the Micro H2 while all the mounts made for 30 millimeters, uh, 30 millimeter uh, diameter of the scope tube are not made especially for, for uh, 9000 models but they are made for all the rifle scopes and 9000 model just fits on them. So I would say that the main dilemma, dilemma is regarding the mounting. Where will you mount the dot, what kind of rifle it is and then what is the availability of different mounts. This is the dilemma between 9000 model and uh, the uh, Micro H2 model. Normally the H2 is smaller, lighter, more compact, more elegant and also the battery is different. Yes. Uh, the battery is here, uh, CR2032 uh, here and here it's a little bit different, it's tubular battery. Uh, so physically it's all about the size and weight. I would say like this. Now that we are um, still at the physical properties, um, I can see that the, the H2 model has shrouded uh, turrets. Mm -hmm. So this is probably an improvement from, from the previous, from the all previous, previous versions, versions, which did not have this. Yeah, so it's like a protector against all the bumps and hits and so on. You're practically unable to hit uh, the turret and to damage it in any way. This is still possible on, on the 9000 model. When you have the turret here, if you are not careful, you can hit it somewhere and it can be damaged. The same applies for the battery compartment, which in the 9000 model is, um, well, clearly visible and it's almost like an additional attachment on the dot. Uh, so there is a much bigger possibility that you hit somewhere with, yes. with the battery compartment. Um, what is also different is that the uh, the button for regulating the intensity levels 
is without any markings on the 9000 models while on, uh, on H2 it goes from 0 to 12 and it has clearly marked all, all the intensity levels. I have to be honest, in most cases this is not really that important because you look through the dot, see the red dot and then set the intensity correctly to the given uh, lighting conditions at that moment. Uh, I also see that there are uh, different covers for the objective and ocular lens here than with the 9000 yeah. model. This is the, the latest aim points, also the Hunter series, they come with the flip-up covers like here. Uh, high quality plastic flip up covers while all the older, older models like the 9000 series they come with a bikini type of covers so some of them prefer bikini because when you when you remove it there is nothing around the, the so optics yeah, yeah, yeah. that dangle around yeah or that could disturb your field of view mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, with an H2 it's good to to position the flip-ups in a way that they don't obscure too much of field of view. It's also difficult to lose them this way, right? This, so is, this the is the advantage, advantage yeah. yeah. And you can turn them clearly, so you can fold them in a way that they don't obscure your field of view. Uh, so I would prefer the flip-up covers on the new models. Some people still prefer the bikini covers, but they usually lose them in time because we see that there is a huge demand for... Uh, for uh, for aftermarket uh, uh, bikini covers for these dots because every user sooner or later loses the bikini covers. Okay, so uh, we've covered the physical properties. Now uh, I have, uh, we'll move on to the optical. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've looked through the H2 and I have to say that uh, it's the improvement from the H1 model is quite visible. There is no tint whatsoever. Yeah, it's uh, completely clear. Can you perhaps a little bit <coughs> tell us a little bit about the Optical. Well, I would say in optics, when you look through the H2 and when you look through the 9000 model, you immediately see that 9000 model has a, a little bit of a bluish tint. Not much, compared to all other red dots, almost invisible, but compared to new latest generation of, uh, of aim points, you see Of course, tint. you have to keep in mind that this was... <coughs> aim point is the best back, producer yeah. of red dots, and we have to in mind when we, when we talk about the bluish tint, for all majority of all other manufacturers of red dots, to get the level of bluish tint uh, in this 9000 series, it's an achievement <laughs> for yes. them. For Aimpoint, because they are so good in, in new products, you can see it as, a, as a, a little bit of a disadvantage, but it's almost invisible. But when compared the previous generation 9000 compared to the H2, you see a little bit of tint in the, in the 9000. This is the first difference. The second difference is that, uh, well, at least at the end point in all their brochures and catalogs, they say that the dot definition is better on the H2. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest that it's really, really hard to notice any difference between the 9000 and the H2, that, that the dot will be better defined, more circular, more nicer in the H2 compared to the 9000 series. I would say they are more or less the same. Uh, what is the other, the main, I would say, uh, difference is that the clear aperture or the window size in the 9000 models is bigger than in the H2. And this is an advantage. So the size and the weight is a disadvantage, but you get a bigger window. And that means automatically with the red dot a little bit bigger eye box. So you can be further away from the optical axis and you still see the dot. And in some... I would say when you, when you do rapid target acquisition, this can help a little bit. Now we've talked about the pricing at the beginning of this episode, but still mm. I would like to ask you once again for the more precise uh, prices. Well, if you look at the recommended retail prices, the 9000 series is from 600 to 650 euros. It depends on the, in which European country you are looking at. And the H2 is from 780 with with a with the mount, uh, with the Picatinny or Weaver mount, it fits both Picatinny and So you and can Weaver. also purchase it without the mount? Without the mount, I would say around 700 and something, 700 to 750. So I would say it's about 200 euros of difference, somewhere in or 150 to 200. This is the price difference. Uh, but at the end, I wouldn't say that the price is the main factor. Um, the main factor is where would you wish to mount it? how much does the small size of, of the make, uh, micro H2 means to you and of course the aesthetics. 
I know people who say that the only real nice endpoint is the 9000 series. Then I know others who would only use H2 and nothing else. So it's it's really down to personal taste. So at the end, it, it comes to the user to estimate what he or she prefers. Uh, yeah. In combination with the rifle. In com yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Because if you you can get uh, the H2 on specific mounts for Blazer or uh, Zaur 303 and 404, and on some of these rifles, it really looks perfect. With the original mount, it looks small, elegant, decent, uh, and it works extremely well. You can see this in all the videos on YouTube where they hunt wild boars. The H2 works well. And normally the 9000 also works perfectly, but it's much bigger. So the aesthetic, uh, the aesthetic part is also the dilemma while choosing these two. Thank you very much. Uh, we've covered all the questions that uh, came on our email. Now, if you forgot something, you can either uh, leave a comment below in the comment section, or you can also send us an email and we'll reply to it. Um, now, if you found the video useful, you can either hit like and subscribe or both. And uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you.